Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. I believe we are. We're good to go. I believe so. Um, just uh, just a uh, um, mention to members of the public to remain muted and off camera while on the meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Linda, and uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to our our new board and our new board members. There's some new faces, some some older faces, and some that are returning faces. So it's good to see everyone and uh, and welcome aboard again. We'll begin with our land acknowledgement statement. Uh, the Gannerus Conservation Authority respectfully, respectfully acknowledges that the land on which we gather is situated within the traditional and treaty territory of the Mississaugas and Chippewas of the Anishabek, known today as the Williams Treaty First Nations. Our work on these lands acknowledges their resilience and their longstanding contribution to the area. We are thankful for the opportunity to live, learn, and share with mutual respect and appreciation. Is there anyone with any disclosure of any interest in the meeting? I don't see anyone. So if there is uh, later on, just let us let the uh, CAO know. Minutes from the meeting of uh, November the 17th, 2022, they're attached. Can I have a mover to approve those? Mover, please. Vicki, seconder, Tracy, any comments or questions on those minutes? Anyone? Um, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to mention I won't be voting on them because I wasn't a member of that committee meeting. Okay, but you're, you're able to vote because they are just minutes. You're just approving what was what was there, but uh, that's up to you. You're oh, I didn't attend the meetings because I'm yeah. new. <laughs> okay, so all in favor of the uh, motions presented? Aye. And that's carried. Um, we have one addition to the meeting tonight, and it's uh, we'd like to have a, an in-camera session. And this will be to seek legal advice or perhaps even a potential, uh, potential lawsuit even. Uh, and it's dealing with the protection of our staff and our organization. There has been uh, some information that's been presented and, and uh, it's been out in public and some of it's just not factual and we really want to deal with that uh, tonight if we could so I'd like to add that to our to our agenda so and our in-camera session so can i have a mover to approve the agenda with that addition please miriam second by vicky any comments or questions all in favor aye that's secure any business or, and we have some business arising and we've moved this forward we had one member that I didn't think she was going to be here tonight, but uh, her meeting got canceled, of course, probably because of the weather. So, but we're going to handle, we're going to deal with it now. And that's the 2023 municipal levy. And we have the staff report attached. And Linda, I'm going to turn it over to you and, and uh, you may wish to speak on it. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as the members are aware, the, uh, the 2023 preliminary budget was proposed um, in September. It was prepared in September and brought to the 20, um, the meeting on October 24th of 2022. Tonight is just to vote on the levy. Um, it's not the budget. Um, it, the, the budget that's prepared is, we do not finalize that budget until um, later in the year, once we've spoken to the municipalities and they've finalized their budgets with the capital projects. Um, as the staff report states, the, um, the levy letters were circulated to the municipalities um, back in October, and they, we are required to provide 30 days notice. Um, and we've provided um, more than, than 30 days as we normally do. So this is the only vote, and I believe I've explained this um, during our orientation session. So this is the only vote that um, it has to be recorded and it is a weighted average vote. So the weights are provided by um, MM, uh, MNRF through MMH through the assessments. And um, everybody, as everybody's aware, we received a spreadsheet. I, I sampled that for the new members. And because we have everybody here, um, with the exception of one municipality of uh, Port Hope representative, the total vote present is 91.6437. Uh, 
Um, the agricultural representative uh, does not vote on this as there's no um, a, a, a fiduciary responsibility. So there's no levy from, from that sector. So um, I will be calling the vote. Um, are there any questions through you, Mr. Chair, before we, we do the vote? Yes, uh, Miriam, I see your hand up. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if if, um, if uh, Linda would uh, be so kind to remind me, the levy, it's a decision of the board. There isn't a consultation with the municipality in advance. And the reason I ask is uh, understanding that the letter did go out in October, it has not present, been presented to the new council yet. So if you could please yes. clarify. Um, so the, the levy letters do go out. Um, it's unfortunate um, that Coburg's letter did not get circulated, um, but it is, it is just a vote on the levy, not on the, um, not on the budget. So the levy, the amount is $1,238.96. Um, and yes, Miriam, so those did go out to the uh, municipalities for their review. So um, I'm not sure if it was reviewed by staff at Coburg or how it was dealt with at, staff, at, at Coburg. May I ask um, uh, my fellow representative there, Mr. Barber, whether he had seen anything or had talked to any staff? Uh, no, I have not, not at this point. Um, I understand this is done on a yearly basis. And uh, has there been uh, perhaps, a, I have not seen it, but is there a significant change from the previous year? Um, through you, Mr. Chair, the, um, let me just look at the, uh, the amount for Coburg, um, I believe with Coburg, I don't have it. I don't have the change in front of me. I could look it up in the last report. So it was 2.5% was the levy increase. And I believe the most that one may have gone up is 2.9. Um, the municipality of Clarington, because there was a change in their assessment, if there's a change in their assessment, the levy gets adjusted all the way through. And there is no, we have no control over the change in the assessment that yes. comes from MNRF. So um, in some cases, the increase is, can be less than 2%. And in other cases, they can be higher. And that is just due to the numbers we receive through MNRF. But in answer to your question, um, Randy, uh, the, the, um, the amount was acceptable to the board um, back in September when the guidelines came. Um, and again, in October, when they said circulate it. All right. Well, thank you for that explanation. I think, uh, uh, Councillor Mouton, we, we, we owe our allegiance in this particular vote to uh, the GRCA. We will deal with it uh, if there is some dealing to be done with it uh, eventually at our own council. So uh, uh, I certainly feel comfortable in proceeding from this point. And I, I, I think... Um... Uh, Linda, for her uh, just mentioning that the Coburg reps were actually uh, okay with it, um, the last, the last two. Thank you. Thank you. I know in our own hey. municipality, it went through to our, our staff, and our staff had, had formed a, a report for for us at our last council meeting. So it, it did come from our treasury department. So you may want to check with your treasurer and see see where it is, and go from there. Thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, any, anyone, uh, Mr. Any? Chair, so uh, well, I call, I have a recorded vote. Yeah, I just wanted to see if there's any other questions oh, dealing sorry. with the levy, Linda, if there is anyone else no. with any questions, because I know it's new to some, so. Yep. Is there anyone else with any questions with the levy? Um, Linda, I just want some, I, I'm gonna bring this forward. I mentioned it to you earlier today and, and you said you would, you'd be more than happy to, to uh, explain it maybe. And that is dealing with an, uh, the uh, the five hundred thousand dollar difference that that shows up on our on our budget line. There, can you? Do you want me to deal with that now? Um, okay, I think I it's as good a time as any. Sure. Later, so I, I, I think probably. Mr. Chair, enough. do you want to give an explanation on where this came from? I'm just going to be sharing my screen, but I think it's on page sixteen or seventeen of the levy report. But it came from it came from a presentation to your. Yes. Yes, it did. Uh, there was. Okay. Oh, yeah, you're so, still there. Yeah. 
It's very hard it's to still see. Here. So I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try. Yeah. So um, first of all, I got to make it smaller because I got to um, do switch pages just a minute. I, I'm sorry, uh, board, if this is uh, something that uh, you, you know the answers to, but it did come to our municipality. There was a presentation given yeah. and there was some accusations and so forth. I just want to get this clarified so that so that they under you know that the public understands this as as much as we do so so um the chair has asked me to explain the um the preliminary budget format i guess is is how we will put it so as i mentioned the preliminary budget is prepared in september and all of the columns along the top I will be trying to maneuver through the budget so that you can see, but all of the columns on the top um, are budget items with the exception of uh, the 2022 projected total. And on page three of the preliminary budget, um, it reads all columns in the budget are budgeted figures with the exception of the column headed uh, 2022 projected total, which are the estimated estimated totals to the end of the year. And we've estimated those in September. Uh, the other 2022 other funds show the budgeted figures. So we're talking about um, this, I'm hoping I can, this column here, the other funds, they are a budgeted figure. So all everything here is budgets with the exception of this column It is a projection that we make at the end at the um, in September to the end of the year. So as we move, and I'm reading this directly from the document, and as uh, their budgeted figures and may have been adjusted, or as a result, um, may be reflected by decreases or increases in the projected totals. So I'll use, for example, a couple of years ago when we had, um, or I'll use it, for example, this year, we the forest. So this $320,000, of course, was a budgeted figure we came up with um, back when we passed the budget. And at that time, um, we estimated that that would be the, the uh, total of the membership fees. Well, that has not happened. And I'm, I'm going to take you, th you through that. Um, but there is an explanation of all of this at the beginning of the budget on page three. And it says, for example, if other funds budgeted are not expected to be realized, then the spending in those areas will probably be decreased where possible to compensate for the lack of revenue. Um, we had to do this when COVID hit and all the cancellations for the school groups, we had to quickly change gears. Um, in cases where funding received for a capital project are not spent, it's been carried forward as deferred. So in this case, the total conservation land management, you can see that we had budgeted um, 1,871,000. I'm going to try to, I, it's just that I've got to move pages. Um, 1,871,768. And back in September, we said we thought the projection would be 1,373,000 uh, 1, just for the conservation land management. And that was made up of, of a few things. So I wanna go, I'm gonna try. Um, hmm, I don't want that. Um, I'm trying to move my screen, but I thought I've got the, the gallery there. Maybe if I move the gallery over here, okay. So let's go here. So in conservation land management. So let's talk about the passive rec first. So back in September, we said, um, I don't know if people can see this. Um, oh, I keep trying to move it with my finger. That's why that's doing that. Um, so we, the budget came in um, last year and said it would be at 329. And back in September, we said, um, let's see, there were some capital projects, so we were not capital projects, there were some projects that we were going to be trying to do. And back in September, we didn't think we would be doing them. So we had budgeted $47,000. That included um, part of a truck purchase, which again, we, we have not received the truck, so that will not happen. 
we were doing railings at Ball's Mill for safety. And in September, um, it was uh, staff did not know, given that they've been dealing with other things, if they would actually be able to do those railings. Well, the railings were done last week. Um, so, so that two thousand dollars predicted for the end of the year, um, that will uh, that will definitely be increasing closer to um, the you know where where we're at, and um, also in within there. Um, the signage, so there was $20,000 that you can see there that was signage. And what was supposed to happen in 2022 was the communications person at the time was to develop a signage policy for all our CAs. And then uh, we were going to be replacing all the signs in the CAs because I'm sure you've all seen some of them. They um, are in need of replacement. So our communications person unfortunately um, left in in June I believe she left and then we did a replacement and Craig started with us in uh, September and he has not gotten to that sign policy um, there's been other you know communications he's been working on so that is now been put over till uh, 2023 so those monies will be deferred um, to that. And there's also some under capital asset replacement. There's going to be some deferral of um, some capital assets there. And therefore, we won't be taking in that uh, $30,000 revenue. But we'll we'll do it next year. Again, um, it's just because of staff time. Under the Forest Center, um, we said back in September it was going to be 381000 And that's because at the time, we did not think we were going to be making the bookings. And so when you have... Four center bookings, everything is um, connected, such as the catering. If we have uh, overnight programs, then we are serving food, catering costs go up, and uh, then just different programming costs go up. So all in all, uh, we did get more bookings as the uh, fall went on. I mean, schools were just getting back. And so we will be closer to that budget um, at that point when we get to the year end and and our books are audited so um by outside auditors um and with the ganaraska forest so as i said the three hundred twenty thousand, we actually um the revenues are going to be closer to for the membership program uh two hundred and sixteen thousand dollars. so that was only up until may and the membership program uh has been extended for another year beyond. So that 216,000, so there's $100,000 there that we're short um, that from the budget. So we compensate in the expenses and we put off some of the projects. So we're not short, we, an we anticipated it and you take action um, at that time. And then the, the uh, $216,000, we're planning on, staff are planning to defer probably close to $100,000 because the membership program only ran for five months. And so it will be carried in to cover the extension of the, the one year. So it will be carried over um, into next year. Um, the $113,000 that you see down in capital asset projects, um, that was to do some works that staff just did not have. And we were taking that money out of the reserve. Those works will not, not be happening. Um, so there is another uh, $113,000 there, as well as um, the, the other expenses that we have have not been brought up to date. So um, at this point, I, I don't have, you know, a, an accurate projected total um, for the, the forest as, as with the others, because we haven't closed the books. But the uh, the number will be higher than seven hundred forty eight thousand. But it will not have that one hundred thirteen. We're not taking the one hundred thirteen thousand dollars, and it will only have um, it will be less, roughly three hundred thousand dollars in uh, in revenue right there. And I believe the difference in that category projected to the budget is something like three hundred fifty five thousand dollars. So, um, Mr. Chair, does that answer um, the question about the um, the five hundred thousand dollars difference I think I've I, 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 I 
thank you very much for that. Um, I, I don't, I didn't doubt it for a minute that it was there, but I, I mean, I just needed some clarification it's, to get public. It, it seems that it's it, uh, yeah. And it's understanding the way that the Ganaraska Region Conservation Authority do their budget. Um, when we look at an increase from one year to the next, we're not looking at the projected total increases. When we say it's a 14% decrease, um, for instance, in the in the Ganaraska Forest, if you look at the proposed 2023 at 815, you compare it for the $1.1 million of 2022, and that's where we get the, um, the decrease. So whenever we're comparing numbers, it's like a levy increase. We're comparing it to the 2022 uh, uh, budgeted figures. So, um, and that's what, when we're speaking about an increase or decrease in grant, everything is to what the budget has, not our, and not our projected totals. Yes, great. Thank you very much, Linda. And if I can get back to the board on the screen, I'll see if there's any other questions from board okay. members. Okay, uh, board, you've had the opportunity to hear it. You didn't see it. Uh, Willie, you have a question, and I'll go to Miriam right after. Yeah, just quickly as I'm looking, and, and um, with the budget for 2023, it's quite a decrease for 2023. Um, why is there such a decrease when supposedly we're coming out of, uh, I guess, the uh, isolation and COVID and everything else? I thought everything would be projected higher. Yeah. Budget through you, Mr. Higher, Chair. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, absolutely. Um, but what we have to do is we we recognize that the revenues for for the forest um, will be down because the membership program um, is part of those revenues, and we're also expecting a decrease in our uh, timber management revenues. So we have to budget accordingly. So some of the projects that maybe that we want to do in the, um, besides the restoration that we have to do of, of the recovery, um, but any other projects, we have to manage those in accordance with the revenues that we have available. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, and Miriam, you had a question? Yes, I do. Uh, could you please um, remind me, any unused funds from one year can they be carried over to the next year? Uh, this might be related to projects that were deferred for whatever reason. Ab ab through you, Mr. Chair, absolutely. And many of our capital projects, that happens because we are, we are um, meeting with your municipal staff in uh, March and April, and the approvals of those projects don't happen until mid-year. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is um, we're then kind of, we've only got a certain number of months, so we defer those um, funds into the following year. And that very often happens, and it happens with projects that we're doing, um, such as any projects that we were going to do out at the, the forest, or in our, as I mentioned, our conservation areas, because staff were, uh, our projects, when we do our projects, it's our, it's our staff wages. Um, and because it's our staff mainly doing those projects. And so if they don't have the time to do those projects, we have to move them to the following year. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else with any further questions? I don't see any, Linda, so you're welcome to go to the levy vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As I mentioned, this is a recorded vote and it is, um, the levy is based on a weighted average vote. So what I will do is I will read the member's name and the amount um, that they're voting on. And when they're, as I said, we've got 91.6436 uh, 91 present. So Randy Barber, you have a vote of 10.5580. Uh, yes or no. Answer that by A or nay. Yay, you can go yes or no or yay or nay. Okay, all right, yay. Okay, um, Mark Loveshin. Uh, sorry, Randy, I should have mentioned that you were representing Coburg, uh, town of Coburg. Um, Mark Loveshin, Hamilton Township, the vote is 10.8962. I'm, I'm a yay. Vicki Mink, Municipality of Port Hope, 
the vote is 8.3564. Yay. Mary Mouton, representing the town of Coburg, the vote is 10.5580. Yes. Larry, oh, sorry, Lance Natchoff, representing Kevin Monaghan, the vote is 0.2062. Yay. Tracy Richardson, representing the city of Kawartha Lakes, the vote is 0 0.0899. In favor. Joan Stover, representing Township of Alnwick Haldeman, the percentage is 0 0.979. She's mute. You're muted, Joan. <laughs> oh, you're still muted. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Willie Wu, representing the municipality of Clarington, the percentage is 25%. Yep. Yay. Margaret Schwartz, representing the municipality of Clarington. The percentage is 25%. Yay. Mr. Chair, that concludes the vote on the, uh, the motion. I will read the, uh, the motion that the GRCA Board of Directors approves the staff report that includes the 2023 levy in the amount of $1,238,969. And the total of the percent um, present was 91.6437, it needed 51% or percent to carry and it carried by 100%. Great, thank you, Linda. And thank you, thank you to the board. Uh, uh, next up. Linda, oh. I, I was wondering, sorry, it's Susan and I'm in, uh, it, just sorry um, to interrupt, but can sorry, you- I, Can you- uh, It's Susan. <laughs> uh, was Susan Aikens, oh. sorry, um, they were muted or okay. I've muted. Thank you. Um, I, I, um, you have people that want to get so, on. And sorry, I just uh, Susan, you, you're not part of the meeting. You're you're in the. You can listen to the meeting, but you're not part of the meeting. Uh, I just wanted to say there are people that want to get on to the meeting, oh, and they have okay. to allow in. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, okay. So Thank we'll, you. We'll I, I, through you, Mr. Chair, I will. I was while I was presenting, I wasn't watching. So thank you, Susan. I will. I will do that. I'll give you a minute, Linda. Do you need the yeah. time to do that? Um, I'm just admitting. I'm just going. Yeah, I was not watching that while I was presenting. <laughs> okay. Good to go. Good to go, Mr. Chair. Yep. Okay, next up, we have our presentations. Okay. Uh, first up, we have the uh, Ganaraska Regional Users Committee. And uh, Mark Gardner, you're going to do a presentation for us. Welcome, Mark. and. Uh, and all the work that you guys do. We appreciate that. Are you able to unmute myself? Good. Yes. Good evening, everybody. That's, I can't believe it's been a year since I did this last. That's a quite a blur. <laughs> it goes fast. Um, it does, it does. Um, I trust that everyone has a copy of the, the presentation. They, it's not really a presentation, it's a bunch of bullets. Yeah, Mark, they don't at this point. Oh. It's just been, oh. um, it just got, they don't. Okay. So if you can read that, that I right. will make sure it goes on um, as part of the, it'll be on as part of the video. Okay, good. Yeah, I uh, I speak very quickly, so I'll try and slow that down, but I don't want to drag this out. I've seen a couple of yawns already, but I won't name names. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks again. The, the Ganaraska Forest Recreational Users Committee, this is our, our annual update. Um, a format I've used in the past, it, it presents the, the Recreational User Committee purpose, and I don't think I should be, re I can restate that. Everyone can have access to that. Um, we, we talk about uh, the things that the Recreational Users Committee uh, can assist with. Uh, I'll, I'll read this one out just for everyone's reference, um, our, our composition. So we have 11 users groups currently accepted for representation, uh, Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters, Ontario Trail Riders Association, a question. Uh, Ontario Federation of ATV Clubs, Ontario Federation of Snowmobile Clubs, Ontario Federation of Trail Riders, Ontario Federation of Four-Wheel Drive Enthusiasts, Ontario Nature, Hike Ontario, Cross Country Ski Ontario, Orienteering Ontario, and the Ontario Cycling Association. So we also have representatives uh, of the municipalities having lands in the forest, that being Township of Cabin Monaghan, Municipality of Clarington, City of Cortha Lakes, 
and the municipality of Port Hope. Um, Tracy Richard Richardson joins us. Hello again, Tracy. Um, so she uh, has a, a pleasure of sitting in our meetings and, and listening to us uh, chat and discuss and muse and those sorts of things. Uh, Ed Van Osh is uh, an invaluable resource to us. He's doing great work. Um, Pam keeps us on the, the straight and narrow. That reminds us of, of procedures and process when we forget and get a little bit too casual. We appreciate that as well. Um, we don't get out into the forest as, as a lot of people haven't been able to since the Derrico in May. So uh, Ed gives us great boots on the ground experience for living vicariously through his time in the woods. It's really good. Um, in fact, I haven't been out in the forest in, in 12 months. I was one of those people that had a membership that expired right at the wrong time to be able to get back in again. So uh, I look forward to getting back. I live so close to it. Um, uh, what else is on the go? Well, yeah, Pam gave us a really good eye opener this year on the changes to the forest, the changes of use, the closures, and the extent of damage. You know, when you can't get out there, it's, it's really it's really good to have someone bring that uh, message to the committee. Um, we, we had a regular four meetings in April, June, September, and November. We came really close to not having a meeting, but uh, you know, the call your friends kind of thing took place. We were able to get enough people that, oh yeah, we forgot the meeting, they jumped in, so we had quorum throughout the year, so that's really good. We did have a little reduction in, in the number of, of person visits from the past, and uh, not quite sure why, but Ed's been, been knocking on doors trying to increase the, the representation from some of the groups that are absent from the, from the meetings as well, uh, trying to get some, some new people on, on uh, the committee. Um, so general highlights, the, the presentations, like I said, about Tracy, uh, Tracy, sorry, or Tracy, but Pam talking about the forest, um, it, it makes us uh, easy ambassadors. You know, we don't have the capacity to go out there and bring in all the information to the table, but the, all of the, the, uh, the staff presenters are, are doing a really good job. Um, Guess gave us a great one on, on forestry. So it's, uh, it's a good learning experience from my perspective. Um, throughout the year, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go through a quick blast uh, on the, the, the things we talked about. And they're basically from the recommendations uh, from the, from the uh, Ganaroska Forest uh, Board. So in April, we talked about uh, users committee terms of reference. That's an annual thing. So every year we go through that just to make sure that we're following the instruction of the board to make sure that we're, we're uh, current with the process. Um, did a cross country skiing and snowshoe update, a membership pass review, um, volunteer forest patrol program in June. We had uh, the May storm update. Uh, surprise, wasn't planning that one. Um, the, the role of the RUC in public outreach, uh, talked about the future of the Ganaraska Forest Recreation Program uh, user groups. Um, RUC involvement in the recreation programming. September, we talked about the, the trail update uh, from the, the reparations following the, the, the storm um, and the, the, the recovery plan as well. In November in our last meeting, we did a winter trails and forestry update a review of the, the, the trail system as it looks like it's gonna stand. Um, the Hemlock Woolly Adelgid, never heard of it, now I'm worried about it. So it's an interesting little thing to, to pay attention to what might be hurting the trees. And then we had a general forest update. So as I mentioned, it was a tough year of participation. I think we, we um, maybe we're about a down a third in, in person visits and you can't really point a finger to that. Maybe it was a little bit of, you know, absence from the forest, people didn't feel as connected, but I'm sure as things get opened back up again, that will turn over because the participation, uh, participants that we had are, are very vocal and, uh, and willing to have a, a lot of good discussions. So we're, we're looking for a couple more uh, user groups, a couple more municipal representatives. And then one of these years, I think we're gonna meet in real life because as long as I've been on, on the, the RUC, it's been virtual. Uh, my, my everyday life is spending 10 hours on the phone talking to the Northwest Territories and places all over. And uh, I, I'm used to it, but not everyone is. So hopefully we can get that change soon. Um, uh, da, 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 I mentioned Ed is knocking on doors of uh, representatives that uh, are, haven't been around in a while, but they're still on the committee. Whether there's a replacement available from their, their, their organization, it'd be great to get everyone at least current and busy with us, but we recognize that some people can't always make it. Um, one of the things that you might notice in the minutes from the RUC is they're a little dry. Um, and, in, and as I was preparing for this presentation, I, I did notice that, you know, you know we, we took it on the chin this year from the, um, the public, because I think there was an expectation that we were going to be presenting things and changing the direction of the forest and telling the, 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 uh, uh, the stories of the public. But 
we have those discussions where we're all talking together during our meetings. We're answering the questions. We're posing some tough ones to Ed. He gives us some good answers. But I think we need to increase the density of the information coming back in the minutes. Because I think when you guys would see our minutes, you'll see, here's the, here's the motion. It was passed by this person. It was seconded by this person. And it was moved on. So it was carried. So I think it's better off if we do add a little bit of value. So when you get those minutes, you can look at them and say, oh, that's what they talked about in this particular meeting. And I think when the members of the public who think we're not talking about the right things because there's no evidence of it really, unless they're a visitor to the meeting. Um, if we put that information into the minutes, they can see the kinds of concerns that we present and the kinds of answers that are given to us. So I, I think that level of adding information to the, to the public might be beneficial. Um, so hopefully we can get a bit more opportunity to, to provide more detail. Uh, we're receiving a lot of information. We're working on, on um, methods to get information back to the, to the board. Um, I think uh, the public has heard a lot of the, uh, the why, but again, that decisions are made, but not why or how. So I think maybe that level of interaction would improve from our perspective. So we've got a little bit, a little bit of room to, to do better, but uh, working forward to that. So I don't want to talk a whole lot. I won't talk any longer. I'll, I'll, I'll call it there. It's quick. It's easy. There's a, a four page PDF coming uh, to you soon that uh, sort of summarizes all that, maybe even enhances it in some cases. But uh, there, I, I talk way too much. I talk way too fast, but I'm willing to take any questions you guys may have. Well, thank you very much, Mark, and, and an excellent job in explaining that. And just to let you know what information that you may not think we get, we get from Tracy. So Tracy, oh, oh, yeah, so yeah, she fills us in all those in those blank spots that you were mentioning. So Tracy, I don't. Yeah, sorry, I don't mean to undervalue you on that, but I, I don't didn't realize how much information gets back because you've got a lot to hear from us. Well, so I appreciate does, that. She does, she does a wonderful job for us. Okay. So, yes. Excellent does get to us. Questions for Mark? Anyone with any questions for Mark? Miriam, yes? Um, actually, uh, no, I just wanted to say thank you, Mark, and I, I certainly look forward to hearing uh, some more details. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, so if I could, Mr. Chair, to uh, Linda, did we lose Randy? We may have. I don't see him. Um, we... Is he on another screen? I another don't know. Uh, let me just check and see if he's on another screen. I don't oh. see him, but he... Oops. Okay, I'll watch for him. Thank you, Miriam. I, I don't, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's too bad. Hopefully he comes back. I won't take it personally. <laughs> I'll, I'll watch with the weather there could be power concerns or something I'll, I'll watch Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Any further questions then? Comments? Questions? Willie, you got your hand up? Yes, Willie and then Tracy. Yeah, through the chair and thank you very much. Uh, uh, I want to get your It's Mark, sorry. Oh, my apologies, <laughs> yeah. Mark. I'm trying that because I'd like to, uh, or Mr. Gardner. <laughs> I, it, it, yeah, Mark Gardner. Gardner as in yes. the expressway with you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And I appreciate your presentation. And you started off by mentioning your group, the Ganaraska Forest uh, Recreational Users Committee, and the number of, uh, uh, I guess, users that uh, take advantage of the forest and the forest trails. Um, and communications. Uh, now, I was on the Ganaraska Region uh, uh, GRCA board uh, previous, and uh, the last term of council, I was not. So I'm uh, relatively uh, fresh. Um, but no, what I wanted to find out, and again, I had a conversation with our mayor, uh, Clarence Mayor Adrian Foster. And in fact, this morning, I had a um, a conversation with a gentleman that is uh, involved with the, uh, I guess, um, uh, off-road bikes, not the ATVs, what do you call it? Um, um, but the motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they make all kinds of allegations and, you know, which, um, if I can ask, whose responsibility is it to get the message out to explain to the different user groups that um, since May with the storm, 
that there are challenges that are happening. It's not that they want to not open the trail. It's just a, a monumental task. Yeah, exactly. We received that input from, from Ed. He gives us the update on the status and the whys of the decision. So in, in the case of the, I think it's the uh, trail riders, Ontario Federation of Trail Riders. So uh, all, all of the different users groups would receive the information from Ed and we can pass it out. We're sort of another avenue to do that. We're not the communications team of the GRCA. We are just a group that ties the users in. So if there's a message that may be specific to go to the, the trail riders, uh, I think it's Cam that takes care of that one. And he, he passes that information out to that group. And if there's anything from that group that comes back at our next meeting, Cam will bring that back in or the other user groups as well. We'll, we'll send the information back in. So we get that. But that's, that, that was the, the link that I was talking about earlier that we're missing a little bit. We're not uh, recording specifically, other than Tracy's great memory, the details of what we're uh, returning back to the, to the board. So there's a little bit of a link loss there. Yeah, no, thank you. And you're correct. It was, uh, I was looking at the notes here that, so when I was speaking with the gentleman, OFTR, you're correct. And uh, I know you can't get into um, writing all the details like they would at, on a Hansard, the minutes like verbatim, but uh, we probably have to do a better job of um, make a note of all the salient points that do happen in a conversation where there's a motion that's passed or, or because social media is terrible for uh, misinformation, let's just say. And I don't know if it's, that is something that we can use to our advantage, social media, other than maybe the uh, GRCA website. I have no idea. Uh, Linda's going to come in on that and hopefully answer your question a little better, Willie. Okay, um, thank you. No, no, thank I you, wasn't Mark. going to answer the question necessarily, but I was going to speak to Mark's um, communication or the minutes. Um, I'm going to suggest that the uh, Recreational Users Committee uh, meetings, just like our GRCA meetings where our minutes lack, the video is up. Um, and perhaps we could use the same thing for the recreational users. Uh, committee meetings that we could post the videos and that would help with the communications and um, our our new communications person I think is is doing a good job um, we did have a gap and uh, so other staff had to fill in about all the information for the forest um, but they were putting at one point bi-weekly or is that twice a week uh, posts on uh, Facebook. And again, I, yes, it's social media. There were some press releases done. Um, but I really just through you, Mr. Chair, I just really wanted to say that perhaps um, I'll, we'll speak with staff and we'll get the recordings of those Recreational Users Committee up on the website, just as the uh, these board meetings are. And that way the public can actually sit and they can, can hear that meeting if they happen to miss it. Okay. Does that help, Willie? Yes, thank you very much, Mark, and thank you very much, Linda. Okay, thank you, and, and Tracy, you had your hand up. Uh, I did, thank you, and I just wanted to make a, a quick comment that, um, you know, being part of this uh, group and um, attending the meetings, it's really, you really get to know the stewardship that each one of these user groups actually bring to the Ganaraska Forest. So you learn a lot just from that perspective. And I know a big part of the discussion was in our meetings is, you know, making sure that the information is getting back to the staff members. Well, those staff members are taking notes back and trying to, you know, cover off any issues and whatnot. Um, but I, I do like the idea of doing the live stream on those meetings as well, because you're going to pick up a lot more information. So, like I said, it's, it's really about uh, the good stewardship of the user groups that are in there using the forest. And this year has been a bit of a difficult challenge, obviously, with the damage and um, the cost of the damage and how long it took to clean it up. So I, I, I really enjoyed being on this group. So thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Anyone else with any questions or comments? Okay, thank you. Thanks again, Mark, for, for coming here tonight or being part of our meeting and, and bring us that information to us. Uh, much appreciated. Miriam got her hand halfway up there just before yeah. the end. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. I'm just checking our screens and there's somebody that's trying to connect by audio. 
I don't see that person, but perhaps Linda, you can. It's called Dell user. I'm sorry for the interruption. I just okay. wasn't sure if it was. Um... Randy trying to get back. Yeah. Linda, you're muted, so I didn't hear what you said, so. Sorry, Mr. Chair. No, um, Randy's been coming under a different name. Um, I don't believe I, and I can't there, I can't um, help that person connect. So I don't know who that is. Okay. okay. Sorry for the interruption. Sorry, Mark. I, I will, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, no problem. Um, so I guess we need a motion to receive the uh, report for information purposes. Verbal report, please. Mover, please. Uh, Tracy, second by Miriam. All in favor? And that's carried. And next we have a uh, Ganaraska forest update. Uh, I know we have some trails open and some staff are a lot happier and so forth. So um, who's going to do that? Is that... Okay, I'm going to do that, Linda. Yep. Yes, Mr. Yeah. Chair. I believe because I think Ed um, Ed is not in attendance because um, of the storm. He he has no connection. Okay. Right. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, board members, staff, and those in the gallery. Uh, my name is Pam Lancaster, Conservation Lands Coordinator here at the Authority. And tonight's uh, presentation update is going to be on two parts. Gus Sawyer, our forester, will speak to an update on the forest management side of things. And then yes, because Ed was unable to attend this evening, he's our forest recreation technician. I'll be uh, providing the update on the trail side of things. So Gus, I will hand things over to you and you can tell me when you need me to advance slides. Yeah, we will do. Thanks, Pam. So hi, board members. Good to see everyone again. Um, for those who were at the last board meeting or returning members, I apologize if I'm reusing some of the uh, old photos here. I tried to spice it up a little bit. Um, at the last meeting, we are kind of wrapping up our salvage operations. So there's not a whole lot to update, but I'm going to try and bring you guys up to speed a little bit. So next slide, please, Pam. All right. So with our Two main salvage areas on Boundary Road. Um, we have completed both of those salvages now. So all of the cutting and forwarding has been completed and that was done by Robinson uh, Forestry Products. There is, as of today, there's I think one landing left with material still on it that needs to be trucked out. Um, but we're hoping to get that cleaned up next week and then we will be completely done those two salvages on Boundary Road. Um, just a reminder for those who uh, may not have known the details of the salvage operations with the second area, which was kind of around the boundary and Porta Road area, it was mostly smaller material that was damaged and blown down there. So just to make that a bit more attractive to the contractors, we included um, some areas that were slated for thinning with it. Um, but just in the interest of time and speeding up the cleanup and trying to get trails open, we were postponing some of that area to next year. So that area still needs to get cut, but everything that has been blown down on that area has already been touched up. So in total for uh, those two salvages, we have a total of 126 truckloads of material have come out. That was all damaged material. Um, that's a change of 17 truckloads from the last uh, update I gave. And we're looking at about 7,400 tons of material, which is an extra 700 tons roughly. Next slide, please. And then the rest of our salvages, so this is the third and fourth area. Um, this was being done by Cedarscape Industries. And unfortunately, basically since the fall, they've just been marred by mechanical breakdowns. So it has been, I would say, probably two, maybe three months now where they haven't been doing anything. Um, we actually, just the way everything was flowing once they went down, we started pawning off some of their areas of cleanup to the other logging contractors that were working with us. So we managed to still get all of the big areas cleaned up. However, we still have some small little patches across the central and west forests um, that they were supposed to help us out with. Um, the last time I had chatted with them, they were saying that they were going out west to buy some new equipment. And he was saying, oh, we will definitely be back before Christmas. Uh, given that we've got basically one week till that now, and I haven't heard any updates on that front, um, I'm assuming that they're not getting in uh, for the rest of the winter is my guess, which is why I say it's likely complete. 
I'm leaving that door open because we still have these areas that are down and a lot of them are hardwood areas. So we can still get in there and salvage the material. They haven't all gone bad in the summer heat like the softwoods do. Um, but given that we're going to be going into ski and sled season, it's going to be a pretty big uh, disruption, I would imagine, at least logistically. So I'm keeping the door open, but I've told the contractor too, that's with the caveat that we have to kind of see where we're at recreationally, how the force is going and whether it's worth even having you guys in or not, or do we postpone that to next summer if we need to. Um, so in total for those two operations, we only had 23 truckloads of material come out from those jobs. Um, that's not including the cleanup that was done by the other contractors who kind of chipped in to get all that stuff cleaned up. Um, but that went for about a total of 1,100 tons. Next slide, please. So with our regular thinning operations, um, we had a big job out in the West Forest that was completed, uh, I believe in time for the last meeting, if I recall, if not, they were just finishing it. That was done by Hokum and Sons. Uh, so everything now has been completed with them, including all the trucking and material. The only job that is currently going on is in the Central Forest along 10th Line. Um, that's also being done by Robinson Forestry Products. So they were doing the salvages and then working their way over progressively to this area. Uh, they've started operations now. I've included a picture there so you can see what's coming out. We've got some high quality material in that. This is a later, more mature plantation. We're lucky enough to uh, yield some utility poles out of this. And uh, unlike our salvage operations, it's nice that we're getting a good return on these ones. Um, that's kind of what's there so far. They are making very good progress so far. I've been very happy with that. I know originally I was hoping that we'd be wrapped up around Christmas, but I'm kind of thinking we're gonna be bleeding into the new year just a little bit. But at the rate that they're going, I'm, uh, I'm optimistic that we'll be open for business very soon. And next slide, please. Oh, there oh, there we go. And this is just more for the, the new board members who maybe have never seen what our forest management looks like in practice. So this is uh, some pictures from the Hokum operation that was going on in the fall there. I just showed uh, on the left there, that is a freshly cut uh, pine plantation. So typically what we do in these is we come in and reduce the density uh, of pine trees by about a third. And that allows enough light to reach the forest floor there to let our little baby white pines and red oaks grow. And that's how we get our, our natural mixed wood forest restored on the landscape. Um, and I just wanted to show you what the overhead view of that looks like. So you can picture all those gaps in between the crowns. Those were once uh, our red pine trees, which we selectively thinned out to allow some space for the best ones to grow. And then also to get that light coming down to the forest floor. So that's what it looks like when it's done right. And I believe that's it, but I might have one more slide. I don't know, let's see, Pam. You have a little bit of delay. No, thank you, okay. Gus. That's uh, the last of your slides, thank you. Um, so yes, yeah, since Ed was unable to attend tonight, I will give the update on the trail recovery and, and partnership front in those efforts. Uh, so there's two topics for tonight's update. The first one's on our trail maintenance agreement. So for the benefit of those um, who may not know, uh, the authority has always had a trail maintenance program as part of the recreation program uh, in its entirety. And it's a program those recreational organizations to fill out an application and enter into a one-year agreement to support trail maintenance in select trails that they would like to work on, uh, generally tied to the, the type of use that they're involved in. Um, so this program, we took the opportunity this year to make a few little tweaks to it, make a, a fillable form to make the application easier. And we relaunched the program uh, just this fall. Um, so as a result of that first call of um, of opportunity, we've had two organizations come forward and um, submit an application. They've done this in the past as well. Uh, Peterborough Trail Builders Association, which is a, a mountain bike organization, has been working with us for a number of years now on trails in the Central Forest, and the Ontario Trail Riders Association, which is the equestrian group who also do work in the Central Forest. So both of these organizations have submitted applications and staff are currently reviewing and, and kind of uh, having dialogue with these two groups on um, developing a work plan that works for both parties in 2023. 
So there is some hope um, that even in the winter months, we can get um, some of these volunteers through their organization onto the trail systems, um, especially where assessments first needs to be taken place and where it's safe for uh, the volunteers to do that. Uh, the second um, front is, again, through the trail maintenance program, is um, discussion mm -hmm. staff are having with the Ontario Federation of Trail Riders, which is the dirt bike provincial organization. Um, so same idea. Uh, I know that they're interested in supporting uh, trail efforts in the West Forest where um, motorized use occurs and, and also in the East Forest where there's some motorized opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, so this is great news for all parties. Um, and we hope that... Um, <laughs> everybody can come to agreements on a work plan that suits everybody's uh, needs. So the next update I wanted to provide was on uh, focusing on the Central Trail, Central Forest Trails. Again, a reminder for our new members that the Central Forest is uh, where it's only non-motorized use is permitted in the Central Forest. Um, so we have over 35 kilometers of cross-country ski trail and uh, as of December 3rd, um, which is a Friday, uh, yeah. all of the ski trails have been cleared of the storm blockages. Um, the, the wood for work that Gus showed the picture of with all the roots on the trails, um, part of the, the hope was that that contract was going to support um, on trail damage, but also these little um, nooks and crannies along the trail where the forest experienced the, the blowdown. So they were able to do some of that work up on the sea loop of our orange trail system. But of course, uh, any of the work we do, be it uh, mechanically or by staff, that means usually that there's some damage to the trail surface. Um, either stumps are being left behind, or in some cases, the trees have blown down and that root bowl root ball has um, wrecked the trail surface. So um, in order to deal with all of the hazards um, and kind of in this process order, uh, the authority was able to bring in mechanical operations like the picture you see here to help with the final busting through of some of the main blowdown areas. And also in this picture, uh, he, this operator is able to just tip the root ball back, pick it up, drop it to shake the dirt off, pick it up, and put it into the forest. And it's that quick. He just moves so nicely. <laughs> um, it's amazing to see an operator in work and uh, it saves uh, so much time by using heavy equipment. Um, so yes, all that was done on December 3rd. Of course, the next day was that windstorm on Saturday um, that we had, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so as a result, we're putting up temporary signs along the ski trail system. As Linda made mention, we're working on a signage policy. So the goal is that in 2023, 24, that with our new signage um, templates and such, that we're able to uh, put more permanent, um, better navigational signs in the forest. Um, and uh, we've made this announcement already, but the blue trail, which is one of the connecting trails for cross-country skiing will be closed through the winter months given operational uh, challenges. And so the other thing we have in the Central Forest is over 10 kilometers of dedicated snowshoe uh, trails. And this is a, a multi-use trail. Um, so uh, throughout the winter month until February, people can mountain bike, snowshoe and um, horseback ride on these same trails. Um, so the, our longer loop, the 8.5 had been cleared previously, like a few months ago, um, and we were able to put signs, uh, temporary signage out there. And this morning, ahead of the snow, <laughs> we were able to finally bust through the last of the storm damage on the 2.5 kilometer trail. So that picture there is from this morning. Um, it was still safe enough to get out there before uh, it got snowed and ice crystals, which is very fun to, to operate in. <laughs> um, so that's good news as well. However, so I'm happy to say that right now the winter trail systems are ready from a recreational perspective. However, as it is always a challenge in operating um, a forest from a restoration perspective, and as Gus alluded to, right this moment, we have active thinning occurring within the central forest in and around the ski and snowshoe trail area. Uh, so it's really important to remember that when we tender off these sites and sell them to a contractor, it becomes that contractor's legal workspace and that area is under the control of the contractor. 
Um, the, our contractor is very aware of the urgency of opening the winter trails. Um, they, all the staff that work them are part of our team and we work together uh, to get things done as quickly as possible. Um, of course, active lo logging in all the different um, processes of, of how logging unfolds does uh, possess a direct risk to users on the winter trail systems. And as a result, the trails will remain closed until the thinning is complete, which is anticipated in around mid to late January. Um, fingers crossed that, you know, breakdowns and things like that don't happen. And I shouldn't even say that out loud. <laughs> Sorry, Gus. <laughs> um, but um, the other thing to note uh, for the snowmobile trails, uh, that the, they are further north in the central forest and, and are not um, impacted by this operation. And uh, for those of you, if you need to collapse your uh, little screen of, of faces, uh, this area in black is overlaid on our, uh, our winter trails, uh, a zoomed in area by the forest center. So these areas in black are where the active operations are. And as you can see, uh, so this is where everybody exits the orange trail and it's all in around the end point. And then this block here is, I'm gonna say three quarters of um, the, the yellow trail system. So these operations do have to move through um, before we can, when we can get things open, but we're hoping that uh, it will still be a quick turnaround and staff still have time to get on and maintain the trails. So again, another image from this morning um, and uh, the hard work that staff do to get these trails open for use. So thank you. And I'll stop sharing yeah, my screen. Thank you, Pam. Uh, questions from the board, uh, the board members? Any questions or comments? <laughs> Anyone? I don't see any, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say a couple of words. I'm gonna say, you know, I, I think we really, if you have a chance uh, and you see Pam or Gus or Ed in person, by all means, uh, give them a, make sure you shake their hands and give them a big thank you because I tell you, they've gone through an awful lot to make this work uh, and get the, get the job done so that uh, things can open up again. And, and it's been a tough challenge and a tough, uh, very tough on them. They've had a lot of public, uh, you know, that we're not, a, we're not happy campers for a while, but uh, I think you know we're getting close to the end and, and these three deserve a lot of credit in getting us there. So so thank you to all three of you for that. Thank you, Mr. Chen. I will note that there's other staff throughout the whole authority who have stepped in to help. Um, you know, obviously there's other staff such as uh, Will and John uh, at the Forest Center, um, but other tech staff have helped throughout sure. the whole summer and our summer crew as well were amazing. And I should just um, just, I meant to say this in the presentation, um, what I just mentioned on my last slide, when we came off the trail this afternoon going, yay, we're, we're done the storm damage clearing, um, part of our route took us uh, in very close proximity, but still in a, we were outside of the work zone of, um, of where our, our harvesting is occurring, our thinning operations, and that is where we realized okay, let's talk to the, the operators, see what they're up to. And so this, uh, as you can appreciate, sometimes we have well-intentioned goals and then things change very shortly. And then we have to make the call to say, we need to, um, to delay the opening. So I, I know we've always said before Christmas, um, you know, it, we're still very much on track um, to get there as, as long as everything goes well. So this was, um, I had to mention this to Linda, just maybe around two o'clock today saying, so <laughs> I love being the bearer of news. <laughs> Very good. I see we have some more comments here. So Tracy, you had a, your hand up. Yeah, thank you. Um, great presentation. You know, it really gives us an idea of, you know, what kind of damage is being done in there. Now, are we thinking of still continuing through the winter months? Like I know with, they had some issues with the single track um, trails and whatnot. Is there is there something that we're doing there? Um, and also, yeah, as you mentioned, the wind. I think we've had more wind in the last month than than uh, we usually get. And I know you've got. I mean, the red pines have a very small short root system, and it doesn't take much for them to topple when they're already compromised. I was just wondering if you could maybe provide a couple of comments on both of those, if you don't mind. 
Right, so I can just, um, guess I'll let you fill in about the other wind damage, but from the trail perspective, I should have said, so once we were done with the ski trails and the excavator came out, I'm like, hey guys, guess what? We just finished the, the cross country ski trails. And of course we knew those winds were coming. So uh, today myself and another support staff person went around the whole trail system and we still had trees from that storm. Nothing too crazy, but enough that we had to stop and cut more trees and, and get them out of the way. So um, it's, you know, yes, when the wind blows, things come down. So Gus, did you want to add anything else? Yeah, no, I just want to say that, um, yeah, the wind events that we have been getting since the storm have been definitely adding on to it. Um, I mean, literally today, today when we were on the snowshoe trail, we had gotten in and I said, there is like more trees down in here than I had, I had thought. Um, it was one of the areas that we were actually looking at having the crew that was having the breakdowns in to come clean up. Um, but I could even tell just from mm -hmm. the trees that were on the ground, a lot of the stuff that was impacted by the Derrico storm um, even if it was just the root balls still attached, a lot of the needles had gone orange. Clearly there was no more water getting up through the tree. But uh, if you were to look on the tail, like the far end of where those blown down trees were, a lot of them still had green on them. So I had suspected that these were some of the trees that were being knocked over in our future wind events. So I'm sure that there's more through and I think it's going to be multiple years where we're going through and finding more and more patches. But Overall, we've cleaned it up, I think, as best as we physically can. And I'm, I'm very happy with the job we've done. Yeah. So that's from uh, the overall forest management perspective, because we do have to kind of tease the two apart uh, in some, some situation, because to your other question, Tracy, about the other trail systems. So to this point, I would say, uh, without knowing really the numbers, uh, staff and our partners and contractors and the help that we had from the other conservation authorities, We've made our way through what we call the forest roads. So there are biggest, widest roads, the secondary roads, which usually connect somewhere within there. And for the central forest, our, our ski trails and our main uh, trail, wide trails. What we are still left with are what we call the dual tracks. So things that an ATV or side-by-side -side can fit down. And then our most narrowest trails, which are generally referred to as single track. So those trails still remain um, the way they have been um, in the summer. Uh, they are a challenge for staff to get down to, to get through with our equipment. Even on our two and a half kilometer trail system, there's areas where we have to really swing our side by side and sometimes back up because those two trees are just too narrow. They, they fit for a hiker or a snowshoe or a horseback rider, but not for our equipment. Um, so the plan over the winter months, of course, staff's focus will turn to uh, grooming and, and maintaining our winter trails. And of course, with the snowmobile trails in there, we're a little bit limited on what equipment we can run on the groomed trails. We don't damage them for users. Um, but th the hope is that we can get out and do some assessments on foot where we're able, uh, especially with some of our volunteer organizations um, and, and regroup for a plan um, for what we are doing in the spring and summer and fall of 2023 for uh, recovery of certain mm -hmm. trails. I, I will make it well known right now that, um, you know, we uh, right now motorized use ended on November 30th. Um, all the other uses are still permitted in the forest. Uh, come February 28th, uh, mountain biking and horseback riding are no longer allowed. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Pam. Anyone else with any questions? Lance, did you have your hand up? I saw a Nope. Okay. Anyone else with any comments or questions? Uh, there being none, we'll have a motion to receive their report for information purposes. Uh, Randy, seconder, seconder by Lance. All in favor? Aye. And that's carried. And Merry Christmas to you, staff members, for all the work you've done. Thanks, Merry Christmas. Uh, next up, we have applications under the Ontario Regulation 16806. Can I have a motion to have, well, they've been approved, so just to receive them for information, please. And we have Vicki, seconder, seconder, please. Uh, Tracy, any, anyone have any questions on any of those uh, applications? Don't see anyone. All, all in favor then of the motion? And that's carried. And next up, we have new business. It's again, Araska Forest Recreational Trail Strategy. Who's going to do that, Linda? Uh, Pam, I believe will speak to that, Mr. Chair. 
Okay, thank you. Pam, you're back on again. <laughs> Here I am. Um, so thank you, Mr. Chair. So the, the board does have the staff report before them. Um, I, I won't share it or whatever, but uh, definitely for 2023, um, staff are, are moving forward with a um, forest recreation uh, trail strategy. And this is to support um, ongoing improvements in the forest uh, associated with recreational opportunities. Uh, so the authority manages a lot of lands and the, the main reason why these lands are managed is for the natural features and functions and, and the hazards uh, that are associated with these lands. Uh, and then secondary is the ability for these lands to be used for educational purposes, recreational and just um, general uh, forest immersion and being in the forest uh, and everything that is a benefit of it. Uh, additionally, these lands, especially the forest is on the Oak Ridges Moraine, which uh, is is important on uh, multiple levels, regional and uh, green belt levels as well. Uh, and because of the forest proximity to the GTA, um, all of the, the increased um, desires to use the forest and all the things that are going to ever be a challenge such as climate change, um, population increase and invasive species is important that the authority has a trail strategy that will uh, look at answering the question of how can recreation and be and look like in the forest in the future. Um, this process will involve public consultation through open houses. It's very similar to our watershed planning processes and our shoreline management plan that we did not that long ago before, just before the pandemic. So there will be public open houses um, and the process will consider all the opportunities and wants of existing and forest, uh, existing and future forest users. And the strategy will consider the topics of um, trails as they relate to forest ecology, health and safety and legal obligations that the trails now have to consider. Um, and the, we will always consider the user group and public input into formulating the strategy. Okay. Thank you, Pam. Any questions for Pam on, on the strategy? It's Ricky, yes. Thank you, and thank you for uh, that summary. Um, I had um, a question come from somebody in the public who feels that this plan contradicts the forest management plan. I don't have specific examples, but just with that information, is there anything that you could speak to that about? Sure. So, um, well, the plan's not, um, the strategy is not been, um, you know, written or, or presented yet, so it's not in contradiction because it's not there yet but maybe the topic the idea that why do we need a strategy when we have a forest management plan so it's really important to keep in mind that a forest management plan is setting out recommendations of how to manage the ecology of the forest so this project of restoring severely degraded lands from the 40s uh, is a 100 year long project and we use a forest management plan to guide how for example red pine should be removed from the stand because it served its purpose of stabilizing the soils and now they have to be removed um, to allow the natural forest to grow up underneath of course we can't do it all at once so there is a guideline operational guidelines on how to move through the forest through operations to continually restore the forest when the consultation was done for, um, for the forest management plan, it had a lot of focus of recreation on it. And some of those um, concerns and opportunities were brought forward in the forest management plan, but under the scope of managing the ecology of the forest. So for example, um, in operations, if we need to close a trail because of health and safety concerns, because there's active logging occurring, there is the ability for through forest management that those trails be closed. Or we can use forest operations as an opportunity to create more trail or improve trails. So an example of the wood for work process where, uh, or even with our current um, uh, thinning operations, we talk to them and say, you know what, there's always been this corner on this trail that has posed challenges for staff to you know, navigate around. We get them to help us make those trail improvements. So recreation is considered under forest management, but forest management is not the only tool and it can't be the single tool used to consider recreation. So a recreational trail stat strategy should be complementary to a forest ma management plan not contradictory. And 
you know, through the public consultation process and through other reviews, if if uh, content is seen to be contradictory, well, then we want that to come forward during um, the, the consultation process, uh, the review process, but it's meant to be, um, you know, complementary parallel process and the two work together to um, to consider recreation in the forest. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else with any questions for Pam? There being none, I'll, I'll just, I just have one for you, Pam. When do you expect uh, to start this process and, and when would the public uh, probably be involved in it? When should they be looking to, you know, for your, uh, basically yep. when's your open house is going to start type thing? Sure. So we haven't um, set everything out in a uh, calendar time frame in terms of days, but uh, once we are all rested from the holiday break, <laughs> um, then we will start um, authoring it and then uh, open houses will probably be in around um, mid to late February into March um, with the intent that when the board of director meetings start up again in like March, April time frame, because uh, I know there's a bit of a, a lull in board of director meetings. Sorry. <laughs> That uh, that is brought forward to the board at that time. Okay, I think we'd start again in February. So yeah, if we could, if you could keep the board informed and and uh, in your plan, and, and we could even have that just as information for us, so that the public yeah, will be able to see it. Through you, Mr. Chair, I believe, uh, especially um, you know, with with Linda's desires, is that you'll get to see myself and Gus and Ed at every meeting <laughs> moving forward, <laughs> um, with the, at least an update on either the trail system, the forest side of things, or or the strategy. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Any no one else with any questions? So can I have a mover to uh, receive the report for information purposes? And we have Miriam seconder. Seconder Bruce, all in favor? Aye. That's carried. <clears throat> we have no other business. So we do have an in camera. Can I have a motion to go in camera? And we'll give Linda a few minutes to, to get things set up. So we no have Randy and Vicky, all in favor? And that's carried. And we'll give. I have a motion that we go ahead with our legal opinion and uh, from what was discussed in camera. Uh, Randy, second by Lance, all in favor? And that's carried unanimously. And thank you all. And it was a pleasure working with you tonight. And can we have a, a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. We got Willie and, and uh, Lance. So all in favor and see you all in a couple months. Bye-bye. Yeah. Merry Bye. Christmas. Happy Merry holidays, Christmas. everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Merry Christmas, Christmas. That's everyone. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Bye.